Hey y'all, this is Ginger DeVries, guest number 56 of the podcast encouraging you today to use your position to broadcast God's love. All things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who's called according to his purpose. God has sent Jesus to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Freedom, my friends. That season may not be the thing that you wanted necessarily, but God needs you to learn something. Hindsight with God, you understand, but in the middle of stuff, you just got to hang on and trust him. We're not supposed to do for God. We're supposed to be for God. The doing is a side effect. God is able to bless you abundantly. If he can take care of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, so more can he do for you. It's all going to work together for your good. If you love God, you just continue to stay humble, to seek God, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. God's word says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We pray this episode is an encouragement to you to go out and use your position to broadcast his love. From Scotto Albritton Studios, here's your host, Ricky. Hey everyone, and welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name, because it's all about Jesus living life on purpose for him. And God has a plan for you today. I don't know what that does to your heart or to your spirit, but just knowing that today matters, that today is God's day. And he's given each of us this day to do something really great for his glory. Something today that we are doing, we get to do for his glory, not our own glory. Today we have on Shay Annis. She is a boutique operator. I want to say like you work at an awesome boutique, glitz and glamour. <laughs> You're also an editor for church services. You do video and audio and post those online to YouTube and whatever other platforms that they have in Murphy, North Carolina. Yeah, Shay, how are yes, you? Yes, it is so fun. I'm wonderful, Ricky. How are you today? I'm good. Is it right to say boutique operator because you wear many hats in that store? <laughs> I guess you could say that. I What it is is I have a friend of about 14 years. I actually met her. She was just a neighbor to me 15 years ago, um, and we just became friends. And uh, I had actually, this is a crazy testimony already, um, I remember as a kid, I would go to her store and like for proms, different things like that, I would walk in and I remember saying, I was telling God one day, I was like, God, I want to work at a store like this. Like how much fun would it be to play with like dresses and jewelry all day and get to witness to people? Like it was incredible. And then, uh, not even like just last year, not only did he answer that prayer, but he pretty much gave me the exact store <laughs> working yeah. for my one of my best friends and it's just been so amazing and God has used it not only just to bless me with a fun incredible job but also to witness so many times and to to pray with people right there in the store we, yeah. we break out in full on church sometimes you know <laughs> you mentioned that so for the person who's listening I met Shay when I was visiting Murphy North Carolina which is just north of Blue Ridge Georgia if anyone knows where that is but um I just walked into the store because you had a sign out front and I'm going to post this on social media but it said, and there's so many stories just with this sign that you have in the front, but um, <laughs> it's the scripture, uh, Philippians 4, 13, about I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I took a picture of it and I didn't have time to go in the store at that moment. But I'm like, man, if, if we can come back downtown, I want to go in the store and meet the people who are working here to have this as the first thing you see when you look at the store. So the next day I snuck in, like my husband was with the kids. I like snuck in and you had something on your shirt that said Jesus. And you were just like, it is so good to see you. We are so blessed. Like, I'm like, oh my goodness, you have to come on my podcast. What's your name? It was incredible. It's a God connection. It was. Well, and just to be so bold and confident in your faith, I was going to share this before we started recording, but Just to encourage the person who's listening, um, we redid our logo for Broadcast is Love. And I didn't know what it should look like. I'm praying about it. I'm not getting any clarity on it. 
I had three people tell me it should be a megaphone. It should be a megaphone because we are sharing our testimony. We are unashamed of the gospel. We are unashamed of Jesus and what he's done in our lives and sharing our testimony in like a megaphone symbol. And this was just after all that was done and decided. And I was kind of against the megaphone idea, but then I met you and I was like, yeah, that's right. That That's actually it. It's like, really, we need to be confident in our faith. So where did you get your confidence in Jesus from? Like, oh where did this my megaphone gosh, that is happen? So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I love that, Ricky. Um, well, I'll tell you, honestly, when I was a kid, I was like really kind of didn't know what to do. I was always the shy kid, believe it or not. Like I was the one in a corner, like, don't look at me, don't talk to me. Like really? so scared to move out of my bubble. And it was through a lot of family prayers. It was through God just being like, no, baby, come here. We're going to use you. It's okay. Like I was the, the kid who went from being too afraid to order their own food. Like, mom, will you do it for me? To being like, no, I got this. And honestly, like working in retail, talking to people, um, I found a love for it. I found a love for people that I, I didn't know that I had. And then all of a sudden I became confident. God just like completely transformed me. I became confident in who he says I am, not in who the devil says I am, not who like peer pressure, all that, like not who other people around me said I am. I started focusing completely on God. And when I did that and I'm like, God, I'm surrendering all this to you. He gave me this confidence because he moved in my life to the point I couldn't deny it. And so now I'm like, you know, the whole point of me being here on this earth is for him according to his purpose and his will. And so whenever you have God guiding you, there's nothing to not be confident about because you can be confident that the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings is with you every single step that you take and he's guiding the path. And that no matter what dart the enemy tries to throw at you, God's there and he's not going to let that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And so that is what gives me the confidence to stand up and say, no, it's Jesus, (laughs) y'all. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And it's so crazy, but in the Christian walk, especially if you've been saved for a long time, it's really easy to hear Shay say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But it's like another thing to take it seriously and apply it to our lives. And that is what you are doing that is, you are believing it and you're walking in his truth. Absolutely. And I, I remember a point in time when I was a kid, I would read the Bible and it was one thing to just read it and go, oh yeah, that's like, that's great. And then turn around and it have no application to my personal life. I remember being in several services where I feel like the preacher was probably like, come on, somebody get this. And it, I, it was just like flying right over my head. I was like, these blinders were on. but eventually. God, like the, I love that song. I don't know if you've heard it, but she says, red letters flooded off the page or flew off the page and flooded my heart with amazing grace. And that's literally how it felt for me about my, my first year of college. When I read, read the word, it started becoming alive to me. And it was like, oh, this is like an act, like this is a, a instruction manual for life. We just have to know how to use it. <laughs> exactly. And believe it, have confidence in it. And really have this megaphone experience where you know the word of God and you're comfortable sharing it. Kind of like what you are doing right now. No weapon formed against me (laughs) shall prosper. Like, hallelujah. We're actually not talking on microphones. These are megaphones coming to you wherever you are today. Um, Answered prayer. You said earlier that God had answered your prayer by providing this job where you are Having church in the store, I want to dig deeper into that to encourage the person listening to use their position, no matter what it is to broadcast God's love. But what does this mean? Like having church in the store? Do you have any stories to share with us about that? Oh, girl, I've got several. I could write a book. Okay, but I'll just share. Lord, tell me which one you want me to reveal. Um, I remember specifically this one woman came in when I was in distress. I was really like the devil had just been like beating me down and I was like really depressed. And um, this woman came in. I did not know who in the world she was. She was from like somewhere in South Georgia. She was up there and she came in and we just started talking for a minute, small talk. And then all of a sudden she was like, honey, I don't do this normally, but I want to pray for you. 
And so she prayed for me. And I mean, like, we was both just like absolutely sobbing and just mm-hmm. crying out to God. And it was like the most beautiful thing in the world. And I didn't know that it was coming. It's like God had used that woman as a vessel. Her name is Janie. She was so precious. Me and her are like great friends now because we met again through Glitz and Glamour. And that also, like somebody else stepping out and saying, encouraged me to want to do it for other people because I saw victory. So then God started sending people into the shop for me. Mm-hmm. And he would, it was like, he wasn't. He wasn't leaving me alone about it. And I don't mean to say that to sound bad, but I was just like, I couldn't get it out of my head because I'm like, is this just me? Or like, God, do you really want me to pray for somebody? Like, do you really want me to do this? Right. And right. so he would like, just like, tell me, like, go pray for them. Go pray for them. Go talk to them. Go, 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 go. And so then I would. And I was like, okay, God, but what if I think I'm crazy? And he was like, baby, I'm right here. I'm like, okay. So we're going <laughs> to go over yeah. to him and I'm like, hey, you know, um, can I pray for you? And then this woman just starts sobbing and she's like, yes, absolutely. And, you know, she's just, she had been crying and some things have been going on in her life. And she basically told me that she felt restored and that she felt like, you know, that she had been struggling because she had just been so beaten down. And she said that, you know, thank you. She was like, thank you for, for doing this because I was really struggling that anybody even still did this. And, um, then I, I saw her on Facebook one day and she had posted before that. She was like, does anybody even really pray? She was like, whenever somebody says that they have a prayer request, is anybody, does anybody actually stop and actually pray? Or do you just do the prayer request and keep going and say, oh, I'm praying and then not actually pray? She's like, I'm just wondering. And then I guess, you know, to see that somebody was actually stopping right there and praying for her, kind of like was like oh okay I guess you know not all hope is lost you know and so sometimes it just takes somebody being obedient to God to to set somebody free because they're they can be struggling you know the devil fights us all our minds fight us our flesh fights us and so when we are just like okay God I don't see what you're doing but I'm trusting you and you take that step out in faith I mean it can really make a world of difference because God knows what he's doing (laughs) Yeah, he's in control. He's our boss. Even if you don't have a job today, God is our boss. He's in control. He's in charge. And we can give him the throne. You know, we can make him number one in our lives. And I love that you talk about praying and being willing and obedient. Who? okay. All right. So the scripture that just came <laughs> up, and I'm going to share the scripture To encourage you all listening and just you, Shay, you're such a blessing. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 16. It says, rejoice always. And then verse 17, pray without ceasing. Verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And then, okay, it says pray without ceasing, but Where I want to encourage you today is where it says in verse 19, do not quench the spirit. So I'm going to read it all together. This is verse 16, 17, 18, and 19 in chapter five of first Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. And when I think of you, Shay, I think of someone who has really not quenched the spirit because you are like, hey, My name's Shay. I have Jesus on my t-shirt. I love the Lord. There's a sign for Jesus at the front. Like I am not ashamed of Jesus. Is there anything you can encourage listeners to not quench the spirit? I absolutely love that, Ricky. Thank you so much. And you are such a blessing to all of us. Like none of nobody would be listening to this podcast right now if it wasn't for your willing and obedience to say, okay, God, I'm doing it. So I want to thank you for your obedience to God as well. But yes, I have been like, I don't know, God, like I'm scared or like, you know, it, you, you act out of fear instead of out of faith. And you, and you know, when God's telling you to do something or like, some people are like, well, how do I hear the voice of God? And, you know, some people, they, you know, they, they want, they want to go deeper. They're just not sure how. And I want to encourage you. I believe it's over in James where he says, you have not because you ask not. And the the thing is, is we just have to ask him. He is our father. He is, he is right there for us. We just simply have to ask him. And so for anybody listening, who's like, 
you know, well, I want to go in deeper with God. I want to know what he wants me to do. I just don't know how to know what that is. Just ask him and he will tell you. He, he has spoken to me through songs. He speaks to me through his word. He speaks to me like I'll hear a still small voice. When it is God's plan, you can't stop it. And when it's not God's plan, you can't force it. And so I pray, I'm like, God, if there's a door that is open, that is not from you, shut it and lock it and don't let me enter it. And God, if it is from you, swing it wide open with a neon sign so that I know that this is the door that you want me to walk through. And so on not quenching the spirit, just just leave and say, okay, God, if you tell me what to do, I will listen. I will follow your lead and I, I give my life to you. That's such a big thing is surrender. Because if you will not surrender to God, he's the perfect gentleman. He's not going to force you. He wants you to follow in his in his footsteps. He wants to guide you. And so whenever you are, uh, whenever you hear from God, the best thing to do is to say, you know, God, I, I may not understand it, but I'm going to do it. And And it can be hard to do, especially in this fallen world that we live in with so many people around us that seem to be dead downers all the time or who seem to who seem to, you know, think that that you're wrong or like they don't want no part of this Jesus stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it, it's so important to just be unashamed, to stand up and boldly proclaim who God is. He says that he's not willing that any should perish, which means, you know, he's not he doesn't judge. And then I feel like a lot of Christians sometimes, you know, they, they kind of feel discouraged and they're like, well, how is God going to use me? Or like, you know, what can I do? I'm just li- like for me, you know, I, I remember a time where I was like, I'm just so like, what is what can God do through me? Like, there's nothing good that can come out of me. And then God's like, um, no, ma'am, I made you perfect in my image. Uh, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I have oh. a called you according to my purpose. Every single person here, even when you don't know it. And, you know, a lot of times I think that that's why a lot of young kids are experiencing so much depression and anxiety. There was a point in my life when the devil tried to convince me to take my life. Like I remember I cried out to God and I I begged to die because I was just so, I I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to turn and I I didn't see hope. And then, Mm -hmm. but God, but God had other plans for me and God delivered me from the depression. He delivered me from the anxiety. He delivered me from all of that. And all I had to do was ask him for help. All I had to do was surrender my sin, my wicked ways, the things that I was doing and go, God, I lay it all down. I give you my life. God, fix it because I can't do anything without you. I need you in literally every single part of my life. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, one of the biggest things is the devil tries to make us feel that we can't do anything. And that's not true. You know, God has a plan for you. He has a plan for me. And even when we don't see it, just being kind to someone, we can show his word. We can broadcast his word through just our own walk. And then people will naturally gravitate to that because they see the light in you. And they're like, I don't know why you're so happy. I don't know. And you're like, oh, it's God. (laughs) It's God. It's his strength. It's his Holy Spirit. And we just want to encourage you to have the confidence in God, to know that nothing is impossible for him. And thank you, Shay, for sharing your testimony. I want to share this with what you just said about, but God, Romans 5 verse 8, it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. And so just remember today, even if you are a believer, like Christ died for you and, and nothing is impossible for God. And I think some two things that you've said in this conversation that I think would really encourage the person listening is you said you saw victory when you were in the store one day, not having a good day. Somebody came in a woman who's not really used to praying for someone out loud in public did. And you guys saw victory, like you saw victory and Jesus has the victory. He defeated hell. He defeated the grave. Like, I mean, we just had Easter recently, like God is in control of everything and he has the victory. So just remembering today that you have the victory. I think that was a really cool message. A lot of the times it seems like, because we live in a fallen world, we live in We live in a world 
where, you know, I mean, it's not hard to like turn on the news and see just how, how things can see, how things can seem so terrible and how things, it seems like there's no hope that all victory has been lost, but that's not true. The problem is, is that we need God. We need Jesus because we cannot act out of ourselves. We cannot act out of our own might and power and have anything prosper. We have to have God. We have to be led by Him. And then He says, you know, that that He wants to help us, that He wants to take everything that the enemy has tried to destroy, and He turns it for good. Yeah. And so victory is really, we have to step into it. We have to receive it. We have to just get with God, get along with Him in our in our prayer closets. We have to just seek Him and see what He says, and He will lead you to the victory. He will. He wants to give us an abundant life, and so uh, I want to encourage anybody who's listening to just know that God really does have your back. One of my favorite verses in the whole world, it's, it's one of the verses that really led me to God, was 1 John 1, 5, which says, it says, then this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So if anybody's going through a hard time, if anybody has has just feels like all hope is gone, that they are just feeling defeated, I want to encourage you that God is on your side and that he has a plan and his plan is to prosper you. Yeah, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. When I first became a believer, I kept thinking that like, because I was a Christian, now I was the light, you know, and not true, not true at all. It's not, it's not anything in our own strength. It is God's strength. It's by God's power. God is the light. God is the love and our prayer just in this time together. I mean, the only reason why we are here today is to be a vessel for Christ and to share what God is doing in our lives to encourage you to go out and grab the megaphone like Shay has this like invisible megaphone and be unashamed of Jesus and your story and have church in your stores and have church in your cars and whatever it is that God leads you to do that you are just giving that glory back to him. The question that we ask every person that comes on this podcast is what Bible verse is encouraging you in this season? Is there a scripture that is encouraging you in this season? I I just went through the valley and now I'm coming back on the mountain. And I'm telling you, like, seasons happen and God is good. He has never once failed me. And so um, one of the things that is encouraging right now is 2 Timothy 1.7 which is for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And then, you know, it also says that uh, that Satan only comes, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. And he comes to steal your joy, steal your peace. He comes to, to wreak havoc in your life because he sees God in us and he hates it because we are made in the image of God and he absolutely despises it. And he does not like, he is mad. And, you know, but I've always heard, my mom's always told me to, you know, right when you feel like you're in the middle of your biggest battle is because Satan is afraid of you. He is, he is afraid of what God's doing in your life. He doesn't like it and he's scared. So he's sending out all he's got to you to, to try to deter you from his demise, because he sees with, with this broadcast, you are helping so many people that so many people are getting the breakthrough that they're, they're grabbing the megaphone and God's army is, is picking up this megaphone and they're going out and they're learning and they're, they're being equipped and they're, they're having breakthrough and the enemy hates it. But he, but, but right here in second Timothy one seven, he, that God has not given us a spirit of fear. But he's given us the spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. And he's got us. He's always got us. And that is what is encouraging me currently. (laughs) That is amazing. Um, That Honestly, it brings me to the second thing that I was going to say I just love about what you've shared today is that remembering who you are and that you are a child of God. And so we're just going to wrap it up with that. Just remembering that God gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Remember that you are a child of God. Remember that you are a child of love and light. Remember that God is the light, like Shay shared in the scripture earlier. And remember that 
God will answer your prayers. He's speaking to you. He wants to have a conversation with you and just keep praying, pray without ceasing and don't quench the spirit. This conversation has been so encouraging, Shay, and thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, Ricky. This has been a blessing to me as well, and I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'm thankful for all of the listeners listening today, and I just want to encourage everyone listening by saying that you are loved, you are valued, you are important, and God has a plan for you. Yes, loved, valued, and God has a plan for you. That's awesome. And at the end of every podcast, we just close it out with a prayer. And God has just done exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever ask or imagine in this conversation with Shay. I'm so glad I walked into that store and I love the items that I bought from it as well. I've been wearing those. (laughs) But uh, anyway, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Shay. Lord, bless her and her family and glitz and glamour and the work that you have her doing editing for churches in Murphy, North Carolina. God, just bless her and keep her and make your face shine upon her and give her peace. I pray for everybody who walks into that store of glitz and glamour to just bless them, Lord, like you're already doing now. Father, decrease us and increase you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys, and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakinn.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. This is amazing.